We'll be discussing yet another disease that can actually affect the central nervous system. And the name of this disease is what subdural epiema, right? So our focus for this lecture is to discuss subdural epiema. And basically, you guys already know uh, the, the pattern we follow every time we're talking about any disease condition, all right? Basically, we always hit the causes of the disease. And we hit the signs, we hit the symptoms. and we just hit everything that is related to the disease that a medical student that is just starting should know. Do you understand? Okay, so uh, talking about subdural epiema, uh, we said that subdural epiema is basically like an infection. And this infection is in the outermost layers of the meninges. Do you understand? And the outermost layer is from the dural, dural arachnoid. And pia matter is the one closest to the brain, all right? So, uh, between the outermost layers, <clears throat> that means the dural matter and the arachnoid, all right, is where you have an infection and there is formation of pus there, okay? And this infection is what we call subdural epiema, all right? So subdural epiema represents a uh, loculated infection between the outermost layers of the meninges, okay? So the outermost layers of the meninges is the dura and the arachnoid layer, okay? So guys, the epiema may develop intracranially or in the spinal canal. Do you understand? So it could be that the epiema is at the level of the brain or the epiema is at the level of the spinal cord. Do you understand? And the brain and the spinal cord are all part of the central nervous system, right? So that's why we are talking about subdural epiema under the uh, disease that can actually affect the central nervous system, okay? So intracranial subdural epiema is the most frequent, okay, is most frequently a complication of what? Sinusitis or less frequently a, co a, a complication of otitis or neuro uh, neurosurgical procedures. Do you understand? So looking at this now, this is a subdural epiema, and um, subdural epiema is uh, basically at the layer between the dural matter and the arachnoid layers, okay? So uh, it is basically infection from the sinuses or skull bones, Sorry, infections of, of sinus from the sinuses or skull bones may be confined to the subdural space, okay? So what are the symptoms of the subdural epiema? We said that because of the confined space, headache is severe and rapidly progressing because you have something developing in your brain and compressing the brain, okay? So anything compressing the brain, the first symptoms you are looking out for is basically headache. So guys, the patient is unwell and lethargic. Right, the patient has a high fever, they have neck stiffness, they have neck stiffness, sorry, from meningeal irritation. All right, so there's irritation of the meninges. All right, so this will result to neck stiffness. All right, and there's tenderness, uh, there's tenderness over the infected sinuses. Of course, when you touch it, you feel it's so tender and all that. Okay, then eventually, the patient who is often young, uh, they will have fits. Fit is what seizures, right? The patients will have seizures. Uh, they will have decreasing consciousness level and they will have decreasing cognitive abilities, right? They will not be able to recognize people again and they will not be able to actually even remember things again. If you even ask them their name, maybe they might have forgotten it and all that, right? Then there's hemiparesis. You know what hemiparesis is? Hemiparesis is basically like um, paralysis that is on one side. Do you understand? One side of the body, hemi, on one side of the body, all right? So, guys, this is um, subdural um, epema, basically talking about the causes, the symptoms, the signs that you could see in these patients, all right? Uh, because this is uh, something that is uh, uh, happening so close to the brain, I didn't actually bring up the treatments. Do you understand? Because I doubt if there will be a treatment, okay, that is available now. Okay, so guys, that's it. We'll be moving on to the next disease that can affect the central nervous system. And bye for now.